we have Wyatt Levy from Hyperspace, and mm -hmm. we're back to the topic of hybrid search and blending uh, different scoring approaches. So mastering hybrid search is a talk, and stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Just wondering which session is uh, better or worse, the one just before lunch or the one just after lunch? Uh, so do, I will do my best to, to keep you interested. Uh, we're going to talk about mastering hybrid search. Um, lots of hype, lots of excitement around uh, vector search and um, some debates where uh, vector search comes to replace um, the traditional uh, classic search or whether, whether it comes to, to complement it and uh, make it better. So in this session, I'm um, um, going to cover some, some methods of blending the two together. Uh, relying on classic um, ranking functions and combining them together with vector search. So a little bit about myself. I'm a, a technology builder, uh, obsessed with data and AI for many years now. Um, I'm based in Tel Aviv, uh, a father of three amazing daughters. And um, two years ago, I co-founded with my partner, Max, a hyperspace. So a um, few words about hyperspace. Um, our vision is to build the world's fastest search engine. Um, in terms of product, um, combining uh, classic traditional search functions uh, that exist for years, either in Elasticsearch, OpenSearch, Solar, and others, um, with vector search capabilities. Um, our technological approach is to um, um, deliver in a step function in performance, in scalability, in cost effectiveness. And we, do, we are doing it by designing a, a, a virtual chip for search, uh, basically uh, programming uh, cloud-based instances um, to make them optimal for search. We are based in Tel Aviv, uh, around 20 people, and some of our customers are, are e-commerce and fraud detection uh, market leaders. So um, the topics I want to cover today is a quick recap about classic keyword search that all of you probably know pretty well, um, weakness, uh, strengths and weaknesses, and then um, vector search, um, whether it comes to replace or complement, Again, strengths and weaknesses. Uh, and then the, 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 the main thing is, is about hybrid, where um, um, vector search can take, uh, take us to the next level. Um, I wish that we had some best practices that are uh, proven, bulletproof, but I think this topic is really evolving. Um, so rather than um, saying best practices, I would just say tips and tricks for now until we, we uh, feel more confident, co uh, um, confident about it. And last but not least, uh, about the move to production. Uh, because lots of hype around vector search, lots of POCs running right now. Um, so talking a little bit about the complexities of, of running uh, or moving from lab into production environment. So. I guess for, for everyone here, uh, we know that relevancy is the key um, and achieving the most relevant result is the goal, right? Uh, in e-commerce, um, relevant uh, results will, will come out, will, will bring more happy shoppers, more engagement. Um, adding a quote here from the Open Source Connections website, um, when users or shoppers get what they what want, uh, if they don't get what they want, they leave, okay? Um, but relevancy is also important in other uh, spaces, um, such as fraud prevention, for instance. Uh, fraud is widely being used uh, using search algorithms um, to classify transactions, uh, an anomaly detection tool. So um, non-relevant results will lead to false positives um, and wrong, wrong identification of fraud. And obviously recommendation systems, um, personalizing our experience and, and uh, wishing to um, um, come up with, with the best recommendation for the users. 
Uh, one good example of recommendation system is obviously Netflix, uh, which uh, um, kind of disrupted the, the industry of, of streaming and content recommendation, um, looking on our history as, as viewers and um, um, using uh, search methods, relevancy methods, uh, uh, and algorithms to customize our, our viewing list. And by doing so, doing so uh, um, um, increasing retention, increasing engagement, and, and in this way, we see more and more content and more uh, series and, um, and movies. So a quick recap of what we have in around classic search for, for many years now. So um, um, the evolution of term frequency all the way from uh, term frequency uh, uh, to TFIDF uh, uh, up to uh, BM25. So this exists for um, um, dozens of years now and, and, and doing pretty well in, in around the uh, keywords uh, ranking. Um, this is the full equation of, of BM25 and, and, and what are the knobs that can be used to, to, to tweak it. Um, and summarizing the strengths of, of keywords matching, which is quite powerful, is that first, it's uh, a, a quite fast and efficient. Uh, uh, it's highly explainable. And I think this is something that we will talk again, uh, soon about vector search. This is something that keyword search really excel at explaining why the results that 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 someone is getting are those results and third is is quite simple it's quite simple intuitive it doesn't require training doesn't require expertise around ai um and it works pretty well um however uh it is not perfect and uh, along the, the two days that i'm here we're hearing a lot of of opportunities uh, to improve re relevancy, to make the, the, the results more relevant to our users. So let's talk a little bit about the challenges around lexical search. So first of all, uh, low recall. Uh, if we doesn't get exact match, we doesn't get results, or we get um, a, few, a few results um, relating pretty well to the previous uh, session of vocabulary mismatch challenges. Um, second is the use of unstructured data. Obviously, lexical search is only limited to structured data um, and um, um, is not able to cover images, uh, voice, and videos. Um, it also fails in, in capturing context and semantics. Um, each and every word is considered individually, and we do not really uh, uh, connect be in between them. And it's also affected by, by ambiguity. Uh, which affects precision. Um, so an interesting uh, uh, example of a, of a BM25 is, is searching for uh, books similar to uh, writings of Marcus Aurelius, okay? So uh, we will get uh, the book Meditation, uh, but we, we won't get other uh, uh, stoic writings that might be quite relevant for, for the one that was searching for Mar Marcus Aurelius. So, uh, very good precision from one one side, but less uh, less relevant results from from the other side. Um, another example, looking on that from 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 a different perspective, maybe too much results, but not not relevant. Uh, a precision uh, problem is, let's say, um, a, a user interested uh, in fruit import is looking for something like changes in Apple stock in the U.S. Uh, so uh, instead of getting apples, we're getting Apple stock as a company, okay? So we get results, but not the one that we were looking for. So this is a kind of a precision problem. Um, so now understanding where we are, uh, let's uh, talk about semantic search, about vector search, about the new kid in the block, uh, and get it into the equation. So vector search, um, if trying to simplify it, uh, we get data, uh, which may be unstructured data, such as images, videos, audio, um, and text. We uh, pass it through an AI model that uh, convert it or transform it into embeddings, which is a series of numbers, uh, multidimensional numbers, 
Um, obviously, we cannot imagine a multidimensional space. So we are looking on that as a cube with three dimensions. And by using algorithms such as k-nearest neighbors, we can actually calculate the ge geometric distance between elements and, and find the, the k-closest ones, okay? So over here is a cube with three dimensions, but try to imagine n dimensions, okay? And in this way, uh, we can understand um, the semantic meaning of text if we are talking about text or finding similar images and videos if we are looking at other different kind of, of data. So the strengths of vector search is first of all, that it's ca capturing semantics um, um, uh, and, and, and different meaning of words. It's quite versatile. So it can be used for many different kinds of, of data types, also unstructured, and it's easily personalized. Uh, in this example here, we see a, 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 multi, a multimodal a, example using text to search an image. Um, so uh, going back to the Marcus Aurelius example, we will get more results, not specifically those that we are, that we were searching for, but those that are likely to be uh, relevant. Um, so looks, looks, looks promising, but again, not, not perfect. Uh, and, and there are some challenges here as well. Let's look on this example. Okay, I'm searching for Pfizer drugs for depression. I'm using vector search uh, to get uh, uh, the relevant one. And then Pfizer and drugs give me a variety of drugs. Some of them are not relevant to depression. Um, so we need to be careful, okay? We cannot use vector search in all different kinds of use cases and specifically not in, in medicine uh, around this case. So it's maybe risky in systems that need extremely uh, precise results, okay? Um, there are ways of mitigating that and we will review that in a couple of uh, slides. Um, so what are the challenges around vector search? And, and, and we can name quite a few. I think the most one is explainability. Uh, we are unable to explain the results. We are not able to explain why we got those results. In some cases, it's, it's not a big issue, but in some application it is. Uh, for instance, in content moderation, um, you need to explain why the content uh, was not appropriate, okay? Why it got removed. Um, Let's think about a company that is using AI to uh, for insurance, and uh, we get a price for that specific person. We need to explain why why the price is so high or so low, and we need to um, explain in order to prove that we are not uh, discriminating or, or something like that, um, which is challenging around vector search. Um, second is embedding generations. Okay, generating the embeddings, managing that, updating that, uh, require uh, knowledge and expertise around LLMs. It's pushing us all into the AI zone. Um, hallucinations. Um, that question been, was, was asked yesterday. How can we make sure that the K results that we got are actually relevant? We always get K results. Uh, this is the fuzziness that vector search bring us. Um, and sometimes it's better to get no results than K results, which are not relevant in any way, okay. uh, which is quite embarrassing. Um, and last is scalability, okay? Uh, vector search algorithms are compute intensive. Um, and if you need to run those on a couple of millions of vectors, it's probably okay to run a uh, great, uh, but when you need to scale up, uh, it's it may be quite challenging. Um, how do we tackle the speed issue? Um, K nearest neighbors algorithms is running uh, a brute force comparison, meaning all the permutation is being checked for the distance. Um, again, if you have 1 million, it will probably run okay in real time. But if you have 100 million or a billion, 
um, then it, uh, no chance to run that in real time. And the, the mitigation for that is approximation. Okay, uh, ANN, approximate nearest neighbors, um, is basically trading a small reduction in accuracy for a significant improvement in latency. Okay, um, here is an example of one of the algorithms. There, is, there, is, there, there are a lot of them. Uh, HNSW is actually based on a graph data structure. And by traversing the graph, we are uh, able to identify a K uh, neighbors, probably not the optimal ones, but quite close. Um, so while NN methods may find uh, or be very close to the exact true nearest neighbors, there is no such guarantee, okay? So if the application require exact match and precision is critical, uh, ANN might fall short. Um, again, looking on the trade-off uh, around performance, uh, this was presented yesterday as well. Uh, ANN benchmarks comparing all a, a, a long list of algorithms developed by by uh, the top companies like Google and Facebook, uh, competing mathematically about the tra this mathematical uh, efficiency of the algorithm uh, between recall um, and, and, and queries per second or latency, okay? Um, so again, once uh, um, getting into high scales, this is the main consideration. Okay, so we spoke about classic search, about vector search separately. Uh, now the main thing is how can we combine them together and, and, and utilize them both. Um, so a very high level, a simplistic example, um, allowing a user maybe searching something uh, like, in search, like in chat GPT, okay? Maybe searching something like Air Jordan men size 46 with a color twist, okay? Or maybe if I'm in booking.com, instead of um, searching for an hotel in Berlin um, and then works through the filters, maybe I will be able someday to say, I want an hotel in Berlin, which is a, 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 has a large kitchen, which is close by to the, to the metro station. Okay, some, some more sophisticated queries like that. Um, so maybe in, in, in Pseudo code, getting into the, what, what, what's beneath the query, there might be a combination of classic search functions, filters, um, TFID, FBM25, aggregations, whatever, alongside with vector search. And then vector search can add another dimension of semantics, understanding what Air Jordan means. Okay. Um, so uh, combining uh, neural search functions uh, with lexical search, um, it's maybe maybe a definition of hybrid search in a way. Okay. So uh, I think the first um, step in looking on, on hybrid use cases is about using metadata filters uh, with vector search. Um, this is, I would say, the, 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 the basic uh, start. Um, and metadata filters actually allows us to include business logic. Uh, that in some cases uh, important. So if we are looking on this uh, drawing, uh, we are looking for an item or a vector. Uh, we have a huge pile of vectors that we need to search in, maybe billion. Um, and then we might break the process into two steps. Step number one is candidate generation, which is a space reduction a uh, step in which we maybe go from billion down to million or thousands. And then to the remaining, we, we use some more precise ranking functions, uh, ranking either BM25 or vector or both. And then we get the top matching uh, items. Um, so space reduction um, that allows us to use rule-based logic. Rule-based logic means that we can use filters for permission, for instance, saying maybe give me data for a specific tenant or a specific department or a specific user. 
um, and, and we can use and we can use filters for that. And and again, managing the cost and performance trade-off by minimizing the data that we uh, uh, run in some some algorithms on. So how do we do it? Um, let's start looking on that from a data perspective. Um, either looking on a document with keywords and vectors. Um, maybe they can be all together on the same document. We can have a document that has structured data with multiple meta metadata fields. And we can have um, within the same document unstructured data with multiple embeddings. Maybe one for the image and one of the description. And then we have um, this item of this book. We have the image, you have the description represented as embeddings, as vectors. And we have the category, subcategory, brand and price and whatever uh, as a key values. Now, assuming we have that, we let's uh, explore some, some, some options um, of combining them both. Uh, one one use case or example. Let's go back to to the Netflix or movie recommendation uh, example. We can either use pure vector search to find similar uh, um, videos or movies, or we can use hybrid search. So if we use just pure vector search, maybe using both the title and description, um, we can take a children movie, and then ends up with having some adult movies um, recommended. And obviously we don't want that. In this case, it may be okay, but we don't want to uh, recommend uh, kids uh, horror movies. Okay. Um, so how do we uh, resolve that problem? Uh, with hybrid search. Um, this is a very simple example, just one filter based on gender. We say we recognize that this is a children movie. We filter out the results uh, by gender. Uh, in this case, we also saying that we don't want the same title because we don't want to recommend on, on the movie that we are looking for based on. And then we apply the, the KNN, the K nearest neighbors, uh, and, and then we get more relevant results. Obviously, this can go, this can be much more sophisticated, like multiple filters and, and multiple combinations. Um, I spoke before about fraud prevention. Um, so fraud prevention is a big, big topic in e-commerce. Um, very different methods of identifying fraud, but it actually seems that search, similarity search, is becoming a, a more and more um, popular uh, approach and more accurate approach to, to identify uh, uh, fraud activities uh, online on e-commerce. Um, how does it work? Uh, once we... Uh, or someone place a transaction online. Um, we basically use similarity search and search algorithms as an anomaly detection tool. We are taking all the, the relevant information that we have on the user, historical purchases, historical activities, um, lots of attributes. We are searching for millions or billions of historical transactions, and we are trying to find the 10 which are the most relevant most similar. Um, and then we are we are able to distinguish whether this is a legit customers or maybe this is a known fraudster, a fraudster that we have in the database or maybe it is someone that's similar to other fraudsters. That can be a very good indication. So in this case, a, a hybrid approach, uh, maybe, maybe before hybrid, the challenges of, of, of just using keywords is the rigidity uh, for that uh, for that purpose, it's really a, a rule-based engine, which is quite rigid. It's it's it has um, um, it's highly sensitive to false to false positives. All of us are aware about those text messages that we get to to approve a transaction, which is quite annoying, um, and and it's extremely latency sensitive. Okay, it needs to be fulfilled within a couple of milliseconds. So a classic approach would be to include this business logic that be, can be really, really complex uh, alongside with uh, a vector approach that takes all the logic uh, within within one big sentence or one big logic. And um, 
Third example, um, um, switch. Uh, switch uh, um, um, is having a platform of, of media. They have an average concurrent uh, uh, viewership of 2.5 million users and, uh, and a total broadcasters of five to 10 million. Uh, and they are using hybrid search uh, in order to, obviously, the, the, the vector search is applied to, to the video, and they're using, uh, for instance, very, very intuitively, right, the hybrid search um, to only f um, search for uh, broadcasts which are actually live now, because you don't want to um, um, uh, uh, propose very similar broadcast, but, but they are not live right now. So using filters for is alive, is narr narrowing down the search in 95% uh, of the of the of the use cases, and and, and in this case uh, they can even apply the the optimal KNN approach and does doesn't need to go into um, approximate approximation. Okay. So now that we are maybe a bit convinced that hybrid is 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 the right way to go. Uh, what are the considerations that we need uh, to take? Again, uh, a bit high level. Um, first, when should we filter? Should we filter before the vector search or should we filter after? Um, in this illustration, uh, we got vectors spread in the, in the, in the, in the dimension. Um, and then we can apply a pre-filter to narrow down, uh, to do some space reduction, to, to apply the business logic that we want. The filter can be filtered by country, okay? And then we, we, uh, we, we, we keep the spread uh, of, of vectors in the space, but it's much, um, um, it's less dense, right? And then we apply the, uh, let's say KNN, okay? Uh, um, it, it's really good for those cases that this, the, the data can be dramatically reduced to more than, not more than, than a couple of millions, because then KNN would not, would probably not run fast enough. So if the space can be reduced to a couple of millions, that, that, that's probably the, the, the best approach. Um, if the space is huge, maybe 1 billion uh, of vectors um, that cannot be easily filtered to a couple of millions, maybe 100 million. Um, we are forced uh, to, to, to other methods such as post-filtering. So we can run HNSW on the, the, the entire data set, okay? We find the top K, maybe we, 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 we bring a lot of K, like a thousand, and then we apply the filtering to, to the candidates that we got from, from vector search. Uh, so um, running, um, for instance, HNSW first, and then metadata filtering to apply the business logic that we want. Um, this is a bit, this approach is a bit problematic because we don't know how much to bring. Maybe we bring 1,000 and none of them pass the, the filters. So it's a bit risky of getting no results. Um, another approach, which is somewhere in between, is applying the filters while traversing the graph on HNSW. So, running the HNSW, but uh, uh, um, running the filters while, while the graph traversal work. So the, work that, the, the way that this algorithm works is that the data is represented as a graph with nodes and, nodes and edges. And while traversing, we can, we can on each candidate, uh, ask whether this uh, meet, meet the filters or not. If it's not meeting the filters, it's, it's skipping it and, and moving further. Obviously, it's a, it will affect performance because you need to traverse more to get to to the to the top K that you that you wanted. So, um, if I need to summarize those three approaches, um, pre filters and then KNN would provide us the um, the optimal result, uh, which is uh, the most accurate one. But it's sensitive to performance. It really depends if the use case can can tolerate that. If not. Uh, 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 you can go go down into a more performance oriented approaches such as filtering uh, with um, um, uh, while traversing the graph or post filtering, okay, which is probably will deliver uh, the best results 
in terms of performance, but not the best accuracy and precision. Um, let's talk about hybrid ranking. So we spoke about filters. Now, now let's talk about cases in which we have vector search results, maybe from a multiple vector search image and description. And we have lexical search results that may have scores that we get from multiple TFIDFs. Now, how do we combine them together into a single coherentic result list? Um, there are a couple of approach. I'm, I'm not sure that I know them all, but I think they are varied between rank-based and score-based. Uh, do we consider the rank of each one, the position in the rank, or do we use the score? Um, if we use the rank, uh, uh, we can use an equation like that. It's quite simplistic. Um, that 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 is provide uh, um, um, a, 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 um, um, some some uh, way to the classic search and vector search based on the rank, based on the position. I think this make method makes sense more uh, when the different method scores are are different in scale and cannot properly normalized. So if different scales, uh, tricky to normalize, using rank would make sense. Here is an example for that. So I may, I may uh, uh, search, try to match between a job and candidates looking for a job uh, using LinkedIn. I can, uh, I can use hybrid search to combine keywords matching, such as software engineer, full stack, and so on and using vector search um, to use the description of the candidate or the, or the job. Uh, and assuming I got um, rank six for lexical search and rank two for vector search, we can then aggregate that and get uh, 0 0.66. Um, other approaches are score-based ranking um, in which we can either um, define our own rule-based approach, define our own um, weights, uh, but, but our as, as experts in the domain, okay? This can be quite tricky and require some, some deep, deep knowledge and understanding to, de to define those weights. Um, another approach is to use a machine learning based model um, uh, such as learning to rank, that is uh, uh, that we can pre-train um, if we have labeled data, uh, in order to define those weights, and then we have an aggregated score that uh, machine learning is assigning uh, the weights for the classic part and the vector part. Okay. Oh my God. How do we get it into production? Um, so running POCs is uh, is easy, uh, but then when you when we need to move something from the lab into production, we need to face some I would say engineering problems. Uh, maybe we got optimal results in the lab, but now we need to deal with scale, with performance, with cost effectiveness, and we need the CTO to be happy. Uh, and now if we are facing the, the, the billion scale challenge um, and, and considering all the data which is coming through streams and batch processing those days, um, it's quite, quite quite easy to reach billion scale. I'm not sure that in e-commerce um, scales are like that, but now almost every startup can scrap the internet and get into billion square, square uh, billion scale quite easily. And indexing, billions of vectors um, it's quite um, um, expensive and finding a cost effective way of indexing billion vectors and uh, running that in real time uh, may, may be quite difficult task um, and in order to break this barrier um, and, and reach into that billion scale in real time it requires some technolo technological step function uh, in building a purpose-built solution for search. Um, 
And basically, this is what we do in hyperspace. Um, we are designing a search processing unit. Uh, we are taking the functions that exist today in Elasticsearch in either vector databases, merge them all together in a uniform data structure. Um, and we um, have rebuilt a hybrid search solution um, at the hardware level using a cloud-based instances, so everything is virtual. And in this way, we are able to achieve um, 10x, 20x in performance at billion scale, um, and surprisingly at 50% of the cost, because uh, there is an efficiency factor here that it's not just faster, but it's much more cost-effective. Um, why? Because the indexing is much more effective uh, with the ability to combine in-memory as well as a disk. Um, so, to summarize everything that we spoke, um, started with the importance of relevancy. Uh, we did some overview about classic search, keyword search, and vector search, some, some strengths, some weaknesses of each one. Uh, and then exploring some ways to, to take search into the next level using hybrid and combining both approaches. Um, I hope I, I was able to uh, provide some best practices or tips um, um, for neural search to improve relevancy and uh, uh, so as achieving real time at scale. So uh, thank you very much for your time. And um, this is my contacts. Uh, I would be happy to connect.